Ten seconds remaining. All right, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we go. Five game number two remaining. coming at you. Alliance versus Vega Squadron. Alliance up one game to nothing here in this best of three. Reserve I'm Breaky time. CPK joined by Tsunami once again. We got the Summit 7 European qualifiers. And the winner of this series moves on to the playoffs. The loser going to be going down to the loser's bracket down there. So looking forward to seeing uh, how this shapes up here. And we got a Skywrath Mage. Another kind of Alliance somewhat signature here. I know Hans can actually, you know, plays this a fair amount as well. So, nice. although somewhat unique. Alliances yeah, they've been back. running this hero occasionally. Um, again, to mixed success, but it's definitely, like, I, I have to continually give props to Alliance for the fact that they are pursuing heroes that no other team seems to care about for various reasons. And... Vegas Squadron may prove why, as they go in for a Lifestealer, a hero that definitely does not care about a large majority of Skyrath and what he has to offer. But, you know, that also comes down to initiation. Sometimes if Clockwork can manage to get, like, a good hook shot and then Skyrath follows up with the Silence, then all of a sudden Cogs becomes a kill box with the Mystic Flare. But, you know, whenever I see off-meta heroes, I have to put more effort into justifying it because they're off meta for a reason because they just are not able to, you know, find the same advantages that you need in how the game plays out or how popular heroes are playing out. But yeah, Alliance take it early on. It's a hero that has some risks taking early on because you do get heroes like Lifestealer who are spell immune or you get a lot of heroes that, you know, don't care about being silenced or heroes that have like magic resistance like i wouldn't be surprised if they could squatch or pick up a rubik or something like that i don't know if they enjoy playing rubik but you know there's a lot of options whenever you see a sky Rep come out yeah yeah you already talked about with the life stealer kind of in response to sword so it's gonna be interesting to see how alliance kind of flows from here with their draft but on the other side of it too not that they they want to lose by any means but they do have that kind of that leeway now of being up Dyer one nothing at the very least here in a best of three but we got fourth band to come for Vega Squadron, and then into the next tier of picks, we have a uh, Slaughter Abaddon coming out from Alliance to go with the Treant and Terrorblade initially. Magnus, Io, Shadow Fiend, and now we'll see Ten what that fourth remain. one is. I know TA was a band last time, and you know Limp especially, just like remain. so many players lately. I mean, I feel like TA was one of the, one of the most explosive heroes at the Kiev Alliance Major uh, with how well he did, and uh, and uh, so many different hands there. So. Yeah, no one VP was definitely putting a clinic on, though, for the most part. And of the heroes that people are theorizing that get nerfed in 7.06, I know that TA is definitely high on people's lists. But until then, you just need to either figure out a way to deal with it or just ban it out. And it looks like Alliance don't really care too much to do anything about it. And TA is one of the heroes that also can do well against Skyrath mid, because Skyrath usually likes having to help out his mid lane by just dumping a bunch of Mystic Flares on the enemy mid and securing a lot of early damage and forcing the enemy mid to burn through early regen. But if you have Refraction, then you can just pop that before Mystic Flare or Skyrath burns through all of his mana, and you're pretty much unaffected for the most part as a Templar. Uh, one minute remaining of extra time, so dive in uh, into that quite a bit, figuring what they want to match up now with. <clears throat> Ursa Warrior. They're going to get Ursa as a one position here, so... Yeah, Loda Ursa. Not not one I feel like we've seen Loda play a lot, at least. Not up there yeah. with his typical. I guess because Troll was banned out and they want one of the traditional counters to Lifestealer, so if you can't get Troll, might as well go for Ursa, I suppose. And Ursa, definitely one of the heroes that everyone has considered to be the go-to against Lifestealer, and with good reason. But you kind of need someone to enable Ursa to pull that off. And while Clockwork is kind of good... The problem is that Cogs will kind of keep Ursa out, but that's pre-Blink Dagger. After Ursa completes a Blink Dagger, then Lifestealer is free food inside of a Cog. But Vega Squadron go for a Kanka, uh, another hero that isn't seen too frequently, especially in the Western scene, more typically favored in Eastern Dota, but huh. Yeah, you know, I was I was actually thinking something along the lines of the Earth Spirit. We saw that ban last game, and Sima I know plays a great one, but uh, they're going to go to Kanka, as you talked about, and that's going to be interesting to see how that works out against the Slana. Maybe, I don't know, I was trying to think of some ideas with it, but I don't know, the X marks a spot, as usual, can come into play. And of course, that ghost ship is a 
valuable tool. They do have the freeze to set up an easy torrent combo, so th there are things here that kind of make sense, but yeah, definitely not your traditional kind of four position. At least that's what we expect it's going to be. I, I guess the mid kunkka isn't 100% out of the question, but that would lose my mind if it's a mid kunkka. <laughs> that yeah. would be amazing. I haven't seen a damage dealing kunkka in a long time, and with good reason, the hero is not really. Mm, that's not his strength anymore, but. Yeah, I, I mean, like, Earth Spirit was one possibility. The other thing I'm thinking is, like, what is Kanka offering that, say, a Monkey King wouldn't be offering? Um, it is, like, you know, typically you think about the X Torrent setup, but nothing that Vegas Squadron has picked yet, and Templar Assassin doesn't really follow up with any potential X Torrent combos, but TA is, uh, picking TA into an Enigma actually is surprising. Why is that? Well, you've got to deal with all the, you know, Midnight Pulse basically just like obliterates your refraction and there's okay. no way, like Midnight Pulse is massive. There's no way you can't be in it in a team fight. And, you know, TA is great against Ursa because most of the time you're be able to refract and Fury Swipes will still add up, but at least you won't be taking damage initially during the refraction. Um, I don't know. Is TA, I mean, like, it, it seems like it, the justification that I gave earlier that against Skyrath you're pretty safe, but... Mid to late game, this TA is going to have a, like a real hell of a time because even Clockwork initiation is an issue because Clockwork, Hookshot, Cogs, and then Blade Mail on TA will just like kill herself pretty much. And so and she'll be comfortable mid, but after the laning phase, she's going to have a tough time, I imagine. But if they get good setups with these Kanka X Torrents and Matt Rider, then you know maybe team fights won't even be that much of an issue. Don't fight Enigma where he's strongest fight him where he's weakest, which is in 1v1 engagements or gank attempts and stuff like that. What are some like LC could, I know that means Clockwork could probably be more of a four position, but LC, you know, Purge against Batrider could ideally be strong and just having it as a solid offlaner as well. But four position is what you think they're going to go for. Whoa. Wait, mid Skyrath? So it is going to be a... Oh no, mid Ursa. Okay. <laughs> so they're just kind of swapping that around. Okay. And I'm a, wow. Why did I think? Okay. They need a middle. That makes sense. <laughs> for some reason. Got me off guard for some, so yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah. be a mid, mid Ursa instead. And well, Slark's going to be in the safe line. Okay. So it is so going to be a support clockwork, though. So I guess that's kind of the other thing that was I didn't really think about too much. All right. So Enigma. Yeah, because I was, I was imagining that Enigma was going to be in the jungle and it was going to be like a off lane clockwork. Which I guess wouldn't really have any potential for mid sky. Damn, I was just I was like I had it in the back of my head and I was like, dude, what if they what if they do it? That would be amazing. But yeah, no, they're not. No, going we to. we, we see Enigma instead. much more in the off lane to be fair as well. Seconds, yeah, when he has been picked up That's lately, true. so that that makes a lot more sense for some reason than just in a register. Five seconds remaining. Off the bat there, but wires crossed. Well, Sark, but, you know, is a good hero against Batrider though. In response. Yeah, definitely. And the whole Alliance draft is, like, all their heroes are good at dealing with each of Vegas Squadron's individual heroes because, you know, Frostbite going to be pretty much ineffective against Slark and Ursa because Ursa can enrage it off, Slark can Dark Pact it off, and the Batrider will also have issues finding heroes to go on, especially if Ursa does go for an Aghanim Scepter, which isn't guaranteed, but... Sometimes if you are against a Batrider, then you consider it to be a little bit more of a priority. And um, I guess there isn't really that much else worth purging off. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how effective the Skyrath is. Because mid lane, you can force the TA to have to waste a bunch of mana on Refraction to just for defensive purposes. But she keeps her damage buff even after the shield wears off. So I'm curious to see how EGM will be spending his time mid. Yeah. Or just in general. Got Hanskin up here, gets up your ASAP. Gets that ward down to block. And now he's already rotating over to the middle lane, has another ward to place. Or maybe just get some information as to uh, what they're planning to do. They're going to, he's going to expose the smoke right here, yeah. Oh, good heads up. <clears throat> and he'll just walk it off. But if anything else, it might make them think that he placed a ward in that area. So I wonder, that's where the mind game's kind of come into play. Can they maybe scout out where this ward is? Kunkka does have the sentry, but it's uh, it's in a completely other spot. So, yeah, unless they somehow pick up on that, unless they wait for the 30-second mark and see. It's probably going to be a successful ward there. Enigma 
is shaping up to be in the off lane. He's actually going the boots first. So I know you know seeing some enigmas, you've seen some get the, the blightstone even or the iron talon or in this case going the boots first. He's shown us a fan. So. Yeah, so he's definitely playing on staying in the lane. Um, Crystal Maiden is not the best at contesting the jungle, so it is a little bit surprising to me that he's not going exclusive jungle because chances are he'll be able to farm faster. Oh, Torrent. Oh man, Kunkka <laughs> successfully steals that rune. Well played. <laughs> Alright, well Kunkka pick is obviously, I'm, I'm already confident in it. Yeah, successful right there. Well played by Sima. And where is Enigma? He's denying the he's middle chilling. lane. He's going to shrine up and he's let his Eidolons deal, deal some damage on this first camp. So maybe we'll hit level 2 and then start moving around, but still, like even then, you would probably go for the Blightstone first or the Iron Talon, but you know, we'll see. We'll keep my eye on Jonas and Finn. Yeah, that is interesting. Well, middle matchup is Ursa versus TA, and it seems like Ursa is fairly decent in this. <laughs> Potentially, at least, if it's true one v one, at least. But that's probably not going to be the case. Kunkka's doing a lot of roaming. I assume that could be. I get the courier. He has boots, and no one really expects a Kunkka to snipe things out. But he shows himself. He's going to just straight invade Enigma's jungle. He discovered that Enigma wasn't in the secondary jungle. Sees what's going on now, and. Enigma doesn't want to have to really lose these Eidolons, so he's just going to continue attacking. Maybe we'll wait to kill a creep, but Sioma's kind of dancing around here. Uh, middle lane, though. Six and two. Ursa oh my god, does he know where the courier is? He's trying to get it, man. <laughs> he's taking some tower damage now, though, and he could be in some trouble. He's going to back off. You'll oh. see Hanskin coming up, and the torrent says hello. Oh, right, they had this ward, so he probably saw it loop in, didn't see it emerge out of the trees, and was like, I'm going to go for this. It doesn't work out. Sioma stole zero points of experience. Bottom lane, first blood potential right here. Dark Pact is ready. Afterlife just trying to cut through the trees. No Firefly yet. It's still level oh. one. Go for the TP. Oh. It's not going to be enough, though. First blood in favor of EGM on that Skyrath. He's that arcane bolt to finish the job. The yeah, Bad Rider actually opted for early wind lace instead of a stick. Most likely was not expecting this arcane bolt harass from EGM this early on. And like, similarly, I was expecting it more on the TA, but they get the kill for successful first blood, and it goes the way of the Skyrath. And so, yeah, he gets a very early boots right now, and that just helps his roaming potential so much more. Man, and if he gets this arcane rune, that would be great. Oh, yeah. Hanskin's kind of leeching experience up here at the top lane now. They see him with the Observer Ward, but it's almost like he's turning into an offlane clockwork because, again, Jonas Fan is sure enough jungling. Despite uh, going the boots first, that, that's, that's almost odd to see like we are talking about, but at the same time, it does give him more movement in the jungle itself to go from camp to camp, so you can argue there. That's where it's beneficial, but as far as actually killing I mean, the creeps. Yeah, you're still, like, you, Enigma the Hero doesn't really matter. Your Eidolon's move speed is the main thing that matters. And so maybe he was just concerned about Kanka or, or Crystal Maiden, like, roaming into this jungle, and then, like, he's kind of screwed if one of them finds him, if he doesn't have boots, because he's just so slow. But, yeah, I'm, I'm still surprised. I mean, he's going to be getting just fine farm. He's at, he's at level 3. He's out-leveling the Kanka by a pretty healthy margin and keeping pace with the Crystal Maiden, who has also been spending a lot of time in the jungle of her own. So... It's fine going for the boots. It's safer, but kind of slows down your farm. Yeah. Oh, and EGM does get that arcane rune, so he's just going to be going bananas on this bat rider. He's looking to hunt him down over here. We got bat rider. Obviously, they see one another, and EGM. Oh, he misses the slow. Willing to take it, but yeah, he's going to have to fall back from here. So. Takes a little bit of pressure. Middle lane, though, they're smoked up. They want to kill a limp. Can they land the torrent? Slow comes out. Freeze. No, not going to get it off. He'll miss the torrent. And now Hans can actually, in the back line's coming in. EGM running in with that Arcane Rune, as we mentioned, spamming everything he has. And down goes Kunkka, actually. Now TA, he's trying to run. No refractions up. He's going to be run down, in fact. And limp gets a double kill out of it. The Malphys also from Enigma assisting right there. Afterlife is here on Batrider, but only level two. Radiance top Good response from Alliance. Attack. Yeah, Hanskin coming in to start that fight was critical. Uh, they definitely thought... I uh, There was really no reason for Vegas Squadron to play that aggressive. Even if you do land the Torrent, TA doesn't have any points in Meld, and 
Ursa is a very, very tanky hero. Has a full poor man's shield and seven armor, just without any uh, tower armor or anything like that. So, yeah, they move uh, quite aggressively. Obviously, you're not expecting that heavy of a rotation coming in from Alliance, but you saw the Skyrath harassing Batrider with that Arcane Rune. You'd think you'd play a little bit conservatively, but Vega Squadron get punished. Now, this Enigma, he's going right into the hand of Midas. <laughs> he has nearly 1,300 gold saved up, so he's... That a pretty good rate. I mean, at this rate, you figure what, by seven, eight minutes at the most, Radiant he's going to have it actually. So, as long as he keeps it up. And wow, a life stealer manages to bring that tower into deny range. Yeah. I'm surprised that the real you was pushing so aggressively. He didn't even have anything like a blightstone, but this tower goes down super fast, five minutes in. And this isn't like a terror blade or, you know, drow ranger or any of those other typical, like, if you leave me alone, I'm going to take your tower. It was a life stealer. And so, a lot of space is consumed now. Sioma, Hanskin fighting each other. But they are. Anyone's going to come out on top. It's Hanskin with that battery assault level two. It does so much. He needs to put him back. Don't Not in time. Hex marks the spot. Pulls him back Hex after the fact. Like now goes Sima. So, good find by Hanskin. And a four for nothing start in favor of Alliance here. As far as hero kills. But I mean, you're right. Lifestealer is, meanwhile, free farming. And as we stressed, already pushing that tower in, even, even though it got denied. The fact that it's dead is impressive nonetheless. Uh, he's working on that very early arm. You know, sometimes we'll see life stealers. Maybe it's a player preference, but perhaps go to the Hannah Midas in cases like this. But yeah, he's just going to get that armlet ready to fight. Kanka oh, again handsome. found by <laughs> the clockwork. Man, that has to be frustrating. It's fine this time. Another real you wants something. He knows the cogs are down. Oh. Straight TP out. Torrent's not up. I'm watching Batrider now, actually trying to get away. And Slark, actually, he missed the pounce. It was a very difficult one to land, to be fair. Uh, just over the ledge, a max distance, so does TP out in time, meanwhile, at the bottom. But now he's out, and back to farm goes Loda. Yeah, and Loda's keeping pace. It's not too far behind. You, know, you have to keep in mind that Vega Squadron have a tower advantage already, and so that's why Life Steel's net worth is looking pretty juicy right now. But, you know, Loda's been having to contest this Batrider, whereas Alliance have this Enigma basically getting free farm, working on the Midas, as you said, bought the recipe, <clears throat> bought the recipe outright, and Basically has the glove of haste money in around like 20 more seconds. So yeah, your and fam's on a good pace. The question is that what do you go for as an enigma after the Midas? Do you want to be more push slash team fight oriented in the fact that you want to sustain with like a Greaves or just you know the mech, or do you want to go aggressive with the blink dagger? And I don't really think that Jonas and fam can get away with a blink dagger at this game because you have to worry about torrent, and torrent is like massive range, and you're never going to be able to like dodge a torrent if you go into black hole. Si Sioma will just be holding onto it. Meanwhile, mid lane limp. Yeah. Purges off the frostbite. He's going to force out a rage. Actually, will dodge a torrent as a result because he went back in. X marks the spot. Going to bring him back, but here comes that support now. Hanskin. He's not level 6, though, so no hook shot threat, and he'll be able to back it off. But, yeah, that is kind of interesting because, honestly, I'm looking at this dire lineup, and it's it doesn't scream one that's like, oh, my God, Enigma's not going to get any black holes off. It's not the greatest. Now, as you pointed out, torrent with a range is definitely dangerous, but Outside of that, there's not a lot to be worried about. In fact, both cores can't do anything, of course, on the Life Stealer or the TA for that matter. So um, I, I could see it going either way, but yeah, I, I mean, the idea that Guardian Greaves get into those Arcane Boots first and eventually the Guardian Greaves ASAP um, could potentially be uh, the route that they decide to go. If anything, with Ursa and the active start that he's looking to have, uh, perhaps don't need the, the blink also on Enigma, you could argue. So. Yeah, the fact that Sioma is kind of like he's he's pretty far behind. He's only level three. It seems like he's been doing a lot of work, but you need to also get experience while you're going from lane to lane. If it, Kanka was getting lots of levels, then I would definitely be against the Blink Dagger because like yeah, Torrent is one thing, but then like you can just also just save the X and just cast X twice on Enigma while he's black holing and then instantly gone. And so Kanka's never going to be deep into a fight. And obviously, you know the ghost ship as well. These are all million range spells that you are going to be able to initiate with if you, you know, find a good opportunity, but you'll also be able to counter initiate if Enigma decides to go in on your team. And so, yeah, I, I'm, plus the way that Alliance are playing, like they're, they're not playing aggressively at all. Yet the, the fact that they have the four kill advantage, it's just by product of Vegas Squadron playing a little bit over aggressively, but Alliance has just been chilling in all of their lanes. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Sark especially, he's just having a good time down here. He sees, once again, applying pressure to the tower, but Batrider's here. But again, Batrider, level five, no lasso threat just yet. And even if he did, we mentioned with Sark, a dark pact, he's not really overall concerned about it. 
And he's continuing to go away here. It's, he's getting a lot of farm uh, item build up early on in this game. I mean, with the Iron Talon, has the Ring of Basilius here, so definitely uh, not looking to rush that Shadow Blade or whatever the item may be here. Nope. On Slark. As Vlad's is going to be the first item, though, finish on Ursa, and I th think he... Yeah, oh, he has 15... Oh, actually, he's changing. Okay, that's what it is. He's going the blink now next, so never mind. He's, uh, Someone needs to be a mid-game force, and seeing as how Slark is kind of not really, like you said, going straight into that Shadow Blade right off the bat, he's going for more mid or early game survivability and early game damage items. Same thing with Enigma, he's not really going aggressive yet, hasn't really left his jungle, in fact, he's just been... Okay, I say that, and now they smoke up. Hanskin has Hookshot, so they might go for something. They they think that TA is in the pit, and the smoke does not pop, so they confirm that she's not in the pit. Top lane. Now you want to go on to the Life Stealer, or cut back here, go for Crystal Maiden. That's more of a free kill. They try to smoke up themselves, going to run right into it. No, Kunkka doesn't. Uh, from a distance, he is exposed, but yeah, Crystal Maiden's going to get picked off. The Cox kind of blocking out Ursa. Black looks ready. If he can find a positioning for it, he, he knows uh, that Seema, though, doing do a good it. job of staying out of range. Gets pulled back in, and down it goes Enigma. Here comes Batrider now. TA also here. Ford out from Hanskin. He is going to be fine, but now Ursa's pulled up to the cliff. Popsy and Rage, a Torrent's going to stop any TP attempt, though. And now Limp just basically has to accept death at this point. So great response from Vega Squadron. A two for one turn. Only losing the Crystal Maiden there. Yeah, that's the problem with one of one of many problems that I've been citing uh, for playing Enigma versus Kanka. As soon as he gets the X on you, it's basically like, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to cast your black hole for another four seconds. You just have to run around doing whatever because he doesn't. Oh, Sioma gets Malifus. Revenge. Mal yeah. And Revenge is Enigma. Revenge. It's so sweet. Yeah. But yeah, no, you, you only get 179 point, gold. Uh, yeah, so as soon as you cast the X and, like, you know, it, you, there's nothing you can do about it. And so you need to just blink in and hope that Kanka's not anywhere near the vicinity. Otherwise, Jonas and Pan's just never going to get a black hole off. God, Slark. And he took it early. He took it, like, he didn't level up Midnight Pulse and all that business. He was just like, no, I'm going to be needing this at some point, but hasn't found it. Yeah, wants to fight. Does have the Arcane Boots now. So, again, rush that hand of Midas. Arcane Boots to fall, so it seems like the idea that Guardian Greaves has become a little more realistic now as he has that. Doesn't need to. I mean, could now go with the Blink Dagger if he really wants to. Keep an eye on that uh, when he queues up here. But, again, it seems like we, you and I both kind of agree that uh, Guardian Greaves overall could potentially be the better route. Dyer's top tower is Not that Blink would be bad by any means. But Shadow Blade pickup on Slark is almost here. 200 more gold, basically, and he has it. So that's going to be good to have. Yeah, actually, back to Enigma real quickly. That talent tree, you got level 10, it's whatever, 10, 20 movement speed over the magic resist. But the level 15 is where it gets really interesting to me because 120 gold per minute. Again, that's a lot of GPM there on top of the hand of minus. But 15% cooldown reduction is also pretty damn good for a lot of things. The hand of minus itself, the black hole especially. I imagine that he's going to go for the GPM because he needs a lot of items. Now X onto the clockwork near the Roche pit. They Ooh. get the, oh, yeah, that's a dead crystal maiden. There you go. Ancient the, like, if Kanka, I mean, sorry, if Enigma really wants to be effective, like, he is going to need a handful of items supp supplementing his levels and all that damage that he can theoretically put out. Like, hell, he might even need, like, a Lincoln's just to deal with X, and then after that, if you have Lincoln's and BKB, then you're pretty safe from Kanka. There's nothing you need to be concerned about, and that's probably more important than the idea of maybe going for more team fights, which is what cooldown reduction would give you, or more push, which is also what cooldown reduction would give you. Alliance want to be able to just take a fight and just wipe everyone out. You don't need to take these piecemeal fights. You can go for a black hole, and if you get it, then you need to win the rest of the fight. And if not, you're probably not going to be able to do very much in the next two minutes. What difference is two and a half minutes going to make? Very true. That's Solar Crest. So that worked out for the team. Prioritizing it here. Medallion picked up. Already for his Jonathan fan, Limp. He's waiting around for that 14 minute bounty. We're going to get that, though. And yeah. now he's going to look to finish that Vlad's as he does have the Blink Dagger, of course. And Radiance he's looking for Roshan. Oh, he bottles up the Illusion. We're going to go bottom lane because we got to fight down here. The real you trying to get out, but the hookshot will stop the TP. And now Life dealing a lot of trouble. He'll infest <laughs> the Siege Creep right here. And now you play the waiting game. What do you do? Yeah. Hey, you know, Life Dealer's like, what's the point? <laughs> why, why wait? He was going to be hunted down anyway, so. 
Yeah, his team, his team just wasn't ready. Bad Rider does not have a TP, and they're you know they're taking care of business in the meantime. Sioma is, I mean, sorry, uh, G is taking care of this Roche. Desolator's completed, and Lodo wants to challenge it. He has Shadow Blade. Holy, he's going wow. crazy that aggressive. Is a ballsy move. He has a magic one as well. Going to be brought back in. Which Shadow Dance is up though. In comes the Ghost Ship. Doing a lot of damage, Loda is going to be able to pounce away barely. Crystal Man and Freezing Field doing work, but not enough to secure it. But he does stall Roshan, though, in a sense. <laughs> Just spike going pretty yellow right there. And yeah, bottom and lane. Allows a yeah, allows to get nearly half damage on this tier 2, and they're still stalling this Rosh. Wow. G doesn't feel confident going back in yet. Doesn't have the Blink Dagger, and so going in plain sight of this Radiant Ward. And Flare actually goes somewhere else. I don't know where Clockwork... Oh, he flared mid lane. Huh. I guess they're going to let this go now. Uh, I don't know about that, Loda. We saw what happened last time. He's going oh back God. in. Shadow Blade is going to try to steal it. No, it was picked up by G right there. G might fall right off the bat. He will. So they get the Aegis Burn at least. ASAP. Are they going to commit to a fight again? Bottom lane, they still have two heroes down there. Enigma and the Ursa are actually both down there still. Hanskin, though, he's getting caught. Nice torrent on it, too. Hanskin will fall. Loda on the run. Got some shots from a distance here. Shadow Dance in two seconds. One, yes, no, oh, he couldn't get it off. Shadow Blade also coming up barely, but good chase by Vega. But again, meanwhile, the bottom lane, what are they, the Enigma, they both have TPs. They're insisting on pushing this tier two, though. And they're going to get it out. I get it. A limp. No, he's not going for it. G may be able to, the problem is he can't go by himself, otherwise he's definitely going to need a black hold. And he has no follow-up. So Jonas and Fan and Limp actually get out and didn't have to participate in that fight. They may have been able to get a little bit more, or they may have been able to save their Slark and their Clockwork if they did show up to the fight. But just the fact that you were able to burn off the Aegis right off the bat is good enough for Alliance. That if you lost the Slark, that sucks, but at least TA is not going to be rolling around with an Aegis for the next five minutes. Got her, so getting the flash just around the corner here. Be nice to have for them. And Solar Crest is going to be finished by Jonas and Fan, meanwhile. So definitely some. Uh, Decent pickups coming up once again for the side of Alliance. Mentioned TA though. Blink Dagger. Gonna get it from the side shop over here. As he walks on by. Blink Dagger also on Bat Rider with that Infest Bomb. Ready to go. They're gonna smoke up even. Kill Lodo. That's a prime target. Good. They're gonna go It'll for it. Good. Is the support close enough? It's not oh. Shadow Dance. Not enough either by Limp. He says, that was my friend, damn it. Bat Rider's gonna get killed. Ghost Ship coming through. The rage is pop from Limp, though, and we'll end up being into a one for one here. Between the two. Definitely Clock has hook. He has oh, yeah. blade mail and hook. There you go. They do get the catch on Crystal Maiden. The real you, though, sitting nearby. Limp's going to be brought back. Torrent throws him in the air. Has some supporting cast. In fact, Lifestealer is the one that's now falling. Lifestealer's going to go down the Ancient Seal. Up to do work. TA, though, picks him off, and now he's going to take out Ursa as well. We got Mid Wars action, baby. Jonathan's fans still looking for a black hole opportunity, but. Again, he just can't find it here. Well, that was pretty chaotic back and forth. I, well, even with Life Stealer going down, I think Vega Squadron definitely wins that. Um, hey, man. She's starting to scale. Well, the problem is that Ursa and Stark both died. And so they ended up only getting one core for the price of two cores. If the TA was also killed, which it's... I'm not sure where Jonas and Finn was during that fight. Like, because Solar Crest wasn't able to be used on anyone, and... Uh, Templar Assassin was just able to pick off Skyrath without any fear of retribution because there was no black hole threat. And also, as a result, Kunkka was just able to spam X persistently on the Ursa. I saw him stay next to this tier 1 for like a good 15 seconds despite definitely moving, but he was like on a treadmill pretty much. And so, yeah, he did not really get to move around in this because Kunkka had no one better to X. Now he'll X up. Jonas and Fan and Clockwork. Oh, nice. Nice response. And the backline actually avoids a torn as a result of Jonas and Fan. And it gets pulled back in, but it doesn't look like the boat hit, honestly. So he's still running. It has Black Hole. Going to be last one right back in, though. Clockwork does go down. And the X brings it right back over here. He's just being pulled every which way by Vega Squadron. They will get a couple of kills out of this. So, yeah, just not really here as a team as Alliance. And Vega Squadron definitely capitalizes with that. And this TA, man, her net worth is really skyrocketing. Yep. That's why the hero was so feared in Kiev. But hands can try to... Sacrificed his life to save the Enigma. He went in for the hook shot to make sure that the X return into Torrent combo wouldn't hit. But, you know, Enigma's still going to have to come back eventually. It may not connect with the Torrent, but it'll come back into the hands of the Life Stealer and the TA. And you're seeing how irritating X can be for all of Alliance's heroes. And there's nothing they can really do about it. So 
I mean, Loda might find Afterlife. Port out. TP immediately. Oh, bull. So close. Oh, if only that flare came like a second earlier, <laughs> but yeah, they get out. And these failed picks are just going to keep on happening unless, okay, so Alliance are going for a smoke now. Don't really have any vision on any enemy hero, so this is a blind smoke. Limp. He's leading the way with that smoke, but again, Jonas fan, it's it's almost like in hindsight, you kind of wish that he had that blink dagger now, because they like could have maybe had a couple of opportunities. And I'm not saying you need to hit black holes to make the ending create 100 worth it, but oh, black hole! Oh, wow, great catch right there! The silence into the Mystic Flare. That's where you see the potential of a support from the Skywrath Mage. Don't let that support title fool you. You do plenty of damage. It's a great pick on a Life Stealer and. They're just going to transition into a top lane push here now. Instead. Yeah, definitely. Well, ideally, you can get the Templar Assassin, but Lifestealer is a great consolation prize if you had to get one. And so that's the power of Alliance's initiation, assuming that they get to initiate on their terms, which, you know, despite it being blind, they still seize the opportunity and go in very quickly. And even then, you saw Kunkka reacting. As soon as Lifestealer went down, they all got torrented inside those cogs. And so... You know, it's a very delicate balance for Alliance to be able to go in, but also be able to get out. In the middle lane of interest right there, but they will spread out to get more foreign Ags being worked on by Ursa, by the way, and that's a interesting pickup here. Yeah, he needs it. These lassos are going to be a problem moving forward. Slark can deal with it, but not so much the Ursa. And same thing, like, He's not going to be able to purge off the X, but he's going to be able to, you know, have a much shorter cooldown on his Enrage. So if he does get X torrented, he can just, you know, sustain quite a bit of the damage. And once the torrent connects, he can also purge off the lift attack. of the torrent slash pseudo stun. So I can definitely understand why Limp is going for it. But problem is someone on Alliance needs to be dealing damage. And Lodo, he's getting pretty good farm, but he's still way behind the TA because G has just been farming. Now oh, mid lane. He's trying to find some heroes here, yeah. Kanka, he's not by himself though. Don't let that fool you. Mystic Flare is coming out. They will get the kill. He gets this combo off the freezing field from a distance. Up on the side, T is looking for an opportunity. Will last one Enigma. They catch him. Can they drop him fast enough? He gets a stun. Oh. Maybe a black hole. Midnight Pulse puts it down. He wants it, but he'll go down. As T is able to run away for the time being, and it seems like she should be able to make her way out of there. Numbers though does favor Alliance, but again, they lost Enigma for two supports. And the rest will get out. I don't know why Enigma didn't use his mech. Oh, that's a good point. Did he have it there? Yeah. Yeah, and I he had the mana. Loda spots out Afterlife. Can definitely kill him. As he opened the pounce, the dark pack. Nice oh, forest staff on timing. The pounce. And now actually Loda's in trouble. No. Shadow Dance helps him get out at least. And supporting cast over here is going to make their way out TP. So you're right, though. That's, that's kind of key. I mean, he was doing a lot right there at the very end, but not using your... Yeah, because the reason he couldn't go for the black hole is because he would have been stuck in Firefly. And so, yeah, you'd be able to get the black hole onto the TA for maybe like one second, but then you were going to die to the Firefly. But with Mechanism, he would have been able to survive for much longer and probably been able to channel the full black hole. But, oh, he dies again. Yeah, watching that happen. I mean, this... This Enigma pick, it's really kind of proving not to be all effective. Like I said earlier, you don't need to be landing big black holes constantly, but the fact that he hasn't even casted one at 23 yeah. and a half minutes is just a little concerning. Yeah, they're going to push further in this bottom lane here. Life Stealer, the Yasha. Yeah, Life Stealer himself also went kind of an interesting build, a Maelstrom into the Yasha here. Don't really talk too much yeah, that's about true. That. It's, uh, I guess he wanted some wave clear for Eidolons, assuming that Alliance were trying to push, but Alliance have not been pushing. Now, Ursa going in, Hookshot connects. Catch the life stealer. The Armatago not going to be enough right there, so great execution there from Alliance. Oscar needs to back off, Enigma's up in one. And they could possibly go for more now. Ursa's blink. Nice X. Zuma's already used this ghost ship. He got some shots. Ancient Seal coming out right there. The Arcane Bolt, Skywrath really trying to keep them both nearby. He's gonna still has Shadow up. Amulet. Uh, oh. He's going to be spotted. Oh, nice try. <laughs> trying to hide right there. And it is cooldown reduction taken by Enigma, by the way. He just got level 15. 
Really? So yeah, he hmm. has CDR here. I mean, he has a lot of activatable items too, to be fair. So a lot of things that are being reduced. Assuming he chooses to use them. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> ah, I'm just, I'm just messing with you, Jonas fan. Yeah, I, I'm, I can't say it'll be worth it until Alliance actually start either fighting or pushing. They need to do one or the other. Otherwise, really, you're just boosting your Midas cooldown, which is, you know, it's, it's great and all, but I'm pretty sure 120 Ooh, GPM still sweet. beats it. Yeah. Well, Roshan just respawned right there. Right as Hurst was checking it out, so a little unfortunate with the timing, but... Oh, Lord is going in on a bomb on the bot lane. He doesn't know this. Out comes Lifestealer. Not yet, oh, Shadow Dance. Out, out, <laughs> He's going to get the spell, damn it. Yeah, he'll get a life joint now pops out, but obviously damage is done, and Loda will avoid. I don't know what the waiting was. For life yeah, Stiller. because if Lifestealer had come out earlier, then I feel like Loda would have gone into Shadow Dance much sooner. But I don't know. They were hoping that the Lasso would connect, and then Lifestealer would get out. But Loda was on the aggressive, and there was no chance of the Lifestealer. I mean, there was no chance of the Lasso not getting Dark Pacted off, and so they give up that valuable kill, and now Lions are going to take a Roche. Yeah, no Bat Rider. They missed out on a strong initiation there, so not going to take the risk. And Axe is now finished on Ursa as well. You mentioned it's, it's against the Lasso, especially. It's going to be great and, in general, going to be a very useful tool as he does have level 3 in Rage now as well. So 18 second cooldown on top of that. That's ridiculous with that in Rage. Yeah, he's going to be abusing that definitely. Even TA is going to lose some effectiveness because you know, she's very burst oriented, but if it's being mitigated by an Ursa, then Ursa will gladly take the fight as opposed to just running away if you're being melted and desolated. But with this very low cooldown, Alliance are in a good shape to start fighting. They have the Aegis, they have pretty, uh, Slark completes the Lincolns, they have, yeah, pretty much all the resources necessary. And, they smoke up underneath a trap. Whoops. So that is a bit of a problem. It's a, it's a smart trap. I actually don't see that trap very often, but that's a brilliant trap because that spot will almost never be sentried. Well, let's go into place there because they definitely saw this and you see them, their positioning as a result. So I kind of wonder if Alliance is like, wait, they must have saw it. Look at that scan too. It's like perfect. Yeah. So even Lifestealer gets out scot-free, and now they might go for a retaliatory smoke. But yeah, you're going to be going into an Aegis, so it's probably wise for Vega Squadron to just play it cool for right now. And Afterlife also has a gem, so they're going to use this opportunity where they know all five heroes definitely went to the same spot together and get rid of some valuable vision that Alliance had on the north side of the map. So Jonas of Pan, he's tired of not getting off black holes. He is going to... Queue up that BKB at least. He finishes the Guardian Greaves, but BKB okay, will be and, next. Yeah, and since Slark completed that Lincolns, he can actually put the Lincolns onto Enigma. So. Oh, yeah. That'll definitely make life a lot easier for Jonas and Fan. Because between BKB and Lincolns, then you're guaranteed. Oh, what but is this over here? Well, Silent? You need both. It's caught initially. Loda, though, can't finish the Loda. job. Shadowblade in, though. Has another pounce coming up, and he should be able to get this. Now. Yeah, Sia yeah. accepts her fate. She knows that might as well not. Oh, oh what a fuck. gets caught. That's big. This is a huge gulf that can manage every fraction, though, yep. with the blink, and she will survive she unless she Lip. Has Lip has a blink. Going to go for it, but even the BK. Okay, well, we'll take that. 10-second BKB? Yeah. You'll definitely take that. Get that used there. So she's very evasive with, with all her abilities and obviously the items, but yeah, using a 10-second BKB. They're going to go elsewhere now. And Ursa is almost, not all, well, he's getting there. The Basher is coming along pretty chance. nicely for him, too. Ideally, yeah, it's that hot off the fight. tails of that Scepter completion, so Ursa is definitely farming very well. G is still holding the crown, but, you know, if he has to spend BKBs unsatisfyingly like that, then the net worth advantage doesn't really show. And the Lions still have plenty of time left on this Aegis. They've got another two minutes left, so... Ideally, they use it to siege, but Vega Squadron are creating pressure, so they may have to defend instead. Top tower is under attack. Slark up front. Mention that Lincoln's he has. A dark pack just in case. Seema just hiding nearby with that shadow amulet. I'm surprised that he went for this shadow amulet. I mean, he's he's completing it into a glimmer cape, I thought. He had a cloak Daya's queued up, but I don't see anything on the courier. Attack. But I don't know. I feel like Aether Lens may have been a little bit more effective because we're seeing how useful these axes are. And, yeah, they may lose a little bit of efficacy, seeing as how Slark has completed that Lincolns and, you know, Limp Scepter ult kind of helps against X, but not really, because it'll still complete even if you enrage. But 
Yeah, he's he's going for I guess like a suit. Oh, okay, no, he does finish the glimmer cave. Okay, so I can agree with that. I just hoping was hoping he wouldn't go shadow blade, which is what his cosmetic would lead me to believe. But yeah. <laughs> All right, back on the shadow blade. Yeah, despite that pretty sweet cosmetic there, enhanced shadow blade on him. Bottom lane, what's this? Silence just hiding down here. Silent uh, just get that hand of Midas herself, but that's, uh, has the Ghost Scepter queued up. It's not bringing the most utility as far as support goes, unfortunately. Of I'm not really sure why Alliance are pushing this bot lane. They already took the tier two. You either push the top or the mid, because you still have Aegis, and I don't think you can take high ground right now. Yeah, they seemed a little unsure. They're, they are going to smoke up right here, and well, I guess they just simply want to go for the base. They do feel confident that they can go high ground. I hope Silent uses freezing field on this creep wave. Gonna do it to attack. cut them off. Is he going to? Yeah. Yes, I love it. Why okay, not? the problem is now your high ground's getting sieged. And uh, hookshot connects <laughs> on the life stealer. That's Bash. a big start. Kill him off the bat. He would not have a buyback. He's gonna infest at the last second. He'll survive for the time being. He's inside one of the creeps right there. Can they find it? Meanwhile, Lasso on a clockwork brings it in. Not the prime target, but it's target nonetheless. They'll take it. And actually, the gem does drop. So that is a pretty good one at that when you consider that. And the Aegis has been reclaimed. So the hold is successful. They take a little bit of tier three damage. Okay. Get yeah, uh, that, yeah, getting the gem is like the main thing. So wait, who did they put it on? They put on, wait, that rider already has one. They get, get on the courier? Oh yeah, okay, it's just lying on the ground. Yeah, so that gem pickup is actually really valuable. Even though it was, yes, just a clockwork. Being able to get rid of that gem off of Alliance is a big deal because they've, they've just never been able to find any initiation with this Enigma. Like, yeah, that situation was kind of difficult because Hookshot was very deep. Jonas and Pam, as mentioned earlier, does not have a Blink Dagger, completed the Greaves and is now working on a BKB. But, you know, you're, you're losing your advantage. They weren't even able to do anything with that Aegis successfully on Lota. Ideally, it was Lota that would get picked by the Templar Assassin by going in deep. But Big Squadron appropriately focus their resources on the guaranteed target, fight back that tier three push. And now Alliance don't really have a good way to push these tier twos and tier threes, which I would have thought that the Aegis was the best opening, but instead they wanted to go for high ground. Notice Slark right there just got his Silver Edge finished actually. So that's just to get the Atagoras good against the likes of especially that uh, Life Stealer here. As far as breaking, and actually has his own BKB now queued up. So we're going to start seeing a couple of those. Obviously, you have Ursa and that kind of rage just with the Axe in a similar effect. So it's going to be a very difficult team to lock down as this game picks up here. If you're Vega Squadron, already already lacking a, a fair amount on uh, on the lockdown as we start from the beginning. So that's going to make team fights difficult. But yeah, Enigma <laughs> still 32 and a half minutes. Uh, you know, good point was brought up in chat. Uh, you uh you won't have any crappy black holes if you never cast it. True, true. So. I'm you gotta put the finger to your temple and just say can't can't miss a black hole if you never cast it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, it's, it, it, you know it's coming, and you, know, you just win it whether or not it's gonna be a game-winning one or kind of a meh one. Loda. Find Sioma. Doesn't have detection though, and so Sioma can just go into Glimmer Cave. Oh, he wants life steal though. He's even gonna try to get Crystal as she ports out, but yeah, he can't stop any of the TP. Oh, so wow, Sioma. They're all just gonna blink away, or TP away, excuse me. Yeah, I think unfortunately Hanskin's hookshot connected onto neutrals. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. Whoops. That's big, because yeah, they were going for life stealer for sure. If they could have gotten the life stealer, that would have been pretty significant. Especially because now G is pushing top tier two and. Loda doesn't have a TP, EGM doesn't have a TP, Clockwork doesn't have a TP, Enigma doesn't have a TP, Ursa has a TP, but he's just one hero. He's a scary one. TA is also pretty True. scary though, level 25 already. Again, the plus three refraction instances as we saw earlier. And the Bloodthorn is almost finished actually. Yeah, and Bloodthorn is going to be really valuable this game. Uh, Ursa is, of course, able to enrage off stuns, but you need to be able to cast spells to do that. And if you're silenced, you cannot enrage Scepter or otherwise when you're stuck with the Bloodthorn. So yeah. it's going to be a very, very important pickup for G. And especially because Ursa does not have a BKB yet. He's working on it, and he will need it, because then you can BKB and then enrage. But if you're stunned and silenced, then you're screwed. 
escapes right as they're looking to jump him. Very slippery hero that Slark is. CSTA pick up the <laughs> illusion read right in front of her. Gets wow. a BKB. Man, G is not afraid to just use this BKB ASAP. Yeah, that is, that is a skittish Templar assassin. That's now eight seconds with both of them again really just doing nothing, essentially. As we've uh, seen now, so Alliance, those are kind of minor victories that they'll take. What's overall a very even game, and yeah, I know it doesn't say at the top, guys. I'm not sure why. But I ju I just realized that myself yeah. as well, because I was about to be like, "Well, it's an elimination game. You gotta use your BKBs like that." But and I was like, "Wait, is it an elimination game?" Yeah, no. This is uh, yeah, it is a one nothing lead for Alliance. Yeah, so to clarify there, so I'm sure. Yeah, it's usually we could just say, "Look at the top, guys," but no, for some reason it's not up there. But anyways, Alliance up one nothing here in game two, trying to close it out here. Advance onto the playoff stage. Oh, find the Skyrath. Gonna go in, catch the Skyrath. This match of Lotus, like, I want to save you, but you're you're being pulled too far. So, down goes Skyrath, Oof. and they'll fall back. And another fortuitous Roche spawn for Vega Squadron. Yeah, that's it's gonna, gonna go forward. down fast. Enigma just got his BKP. Let's go. That's your chance. No, not go. This is the chance. Flare's gonna get vision, but everyone's too far away. Cheese and Aegis. There you go. Cheese on the life stealer. Aegis onto TA. Is uh, how we'll see it spread out here. The bottom life stealer went for a diffusal blade, which I find interesting. Yeah, he's got a very unique build. Because Slark can dark pact it off. Life. I mean, Ursa can in fact enrage or BKB is. Limp does now have BKB completed. Really, the only thing it helps against is Clockwork, and I guess killing off Skyrath, but I mean, do you really need help killing off Skyrath? So I'm surprised he goes with this Diffusal Blade. Radiance middle tower yeah, that seems a little odd. And again, especially the idea that Dyer's top tower he is uh, more attack. of a strength based he is, he is a strength based hero, so it's just. You know, you're not getting as much yeah. of synergy, of course. I mean, the idea. Oh, oh wow. Gee, what a player. <laughs> X marks Real the spot slick. helps. Yep. I guess the idea is that he had to go for this Manta style. Well, that was not the return. <laughs> I, he had to go for this Manta style <laughs> to get rid of the Skyrath silence. And so he was like, well, if I have Manta style, might as well get some Mana Burn on top of it as well. And so, yeah, if he finds a target, it definitely helps him out in terms of the Mana Burn and, you know, a little bit of bonus damage with the Illusions, which you needed the Illusions regardless. I mean, you could have gone BKB as a life stealer and just bypassed all of that, but I don't know. He finds more value in the Amanda style, so so be it. The only thing is that I don't know. It's a it's a peculiar build, but TA is dealing enough damage for the two of them. As we can see, there's this this whole zero threat push takes down the tier three, and what's Enigma gonna do? That's such a strong combo, man. That's... Oh yeah, it's disgusting. We've seen some some fun tactics used with uh, X marks the spot throughout history, and it's just one of the more simple ones. You uh, you just simply send in your core. In this case, the TA is just so heavily farmed, and as you pointed out, there's really nothing that they can do about that. Yeah, the only threat is if Skyrath gets a Yules, but Skyrath oh, is a long ways away from getting anything. So there is really nothing right now that Alliance can do against that, and TA is going to find a double damage rune. So if that's not a recipe for a set of racks, then I don't know what would be is Aegis, Pike, X plays, G is very well protected. That's actually a really good point about the yields because yeah. that, that has, I mean, they're already starting to see it now a little bit, and that's going to be something that clearly Vega Squadron is going to look to abuse, as mentioned. A yields on the clockwork, even, who's now even going to Heaven's Albert here Boom. instead. That's true. But uh, figuring the good at Yules could be beneficial, or I was even going to say the Enigma, but he just got his Blink Dagger now, so is this it? Is this the moment? They want to stop. They're going to do some damage to him. He gets pulled back, though. Here we go, the Infest Whoa. Bomb. They catch Enigma, actually. That's the prime target, and he would not have a buyback, but it's not enough to kill him. Is he going to go for the Black Hole? He gets it off right here. He locks down TA. That is the big target that they want. Can they take him out of the end? The cheese out popped by Life Stealer, but TA is going to survive still with the Aegis. Okay, he finally will go down. But the Aegis is popped. Clockwork, he's dead for 40 seconds and stained it. Life Stealer, he's taking a good chunk of life right here. He has to be a little bit careful. He's going in, and he's going to fall, actually. Very ambitious time from Life Stealer. I guess he figured he was dead anyways at that point. But now Limp, he wants to chase. Going to get close enough is the question. And Rage is still good to go. 
Enemy pull back in though. Malphis comes out from Enigma. Midnight pulls put down. Chasing after Seema, but now G jumps back in. Two shots of Skywrath. However, the refractions are up, but now he's going to need to be careful as Lotus in his face. But Lota, maybe he's the one that needs to be careful. He's going to be brought back, actually, pushed up in the air by the torrent. And Lota goes down on Sark. No buyback, actually, for 85 seconds or so. And now Ursa's limping away. He would not have a buyback himself. I see what she did there. Yeah, I get it. Uh, he'll live, though. Range Rax goes down, and they Vegas Squadron went in much harder than they needed to. They basically took half the Range Rax with just G, and then they were like, well, okay, let's go for a fight anyway. Ghost Ship is going to provide a little bit of sustainability, but right now backdoor protection is enabled, and Slark is dead for 60 seconds with no buyback. So ideally, they're going to try to force out buyback, but Slark does not have it, so it doesn't matter, and they're just going to go back to the... Oh, hook shot. Yeah. Yeah, the, the team support is really on point here for Vega Squadron. In fact, they are going to get Enigma again, but do they really commit to this? It looks like they want to, and is it enough? But KB has popped, and TA now has to be careful. Again, if he dies, he would be for sure dead this time. Granted, he has a buyback, but when there's no Aegis, they're going to lock down Clockwork, though. Torrent connects. Onsuke just so slowly walking away. The oh, man, he wants to go for a big side blade. This just oh, Yona's a fan! This just is not stopping right here. He's going to be pulled back in again. But again, why would Vegas Squadron stop, I guess? They just can keep abusing this. Yeah, and now Lifestealer is going to be back in the mix. Take off that melee racks. Nothing you can do. So they finally got what they came for, and now they're going to retreat. So, oof. An insane fight across the board. Again, the, the black hole, they got the one target you, you definitely like, but they were kind of busy with Lifestealer in the meantime, and position was kind of funky uh vega squadron just you know overall played it very well and really took advantage of that x marks a spot ability yeah i guess the thing that vega was most concerned about is like okay we've shown this strategy like a good you know five runs it's possible that alliance may try to get behind us and then we're really screwed because then ta is going to be deep inside the enemy base whereas if alliance go in through their jungle and flank the rest of vega squadron then they're definitely going to lose a fight so they decide to see they have an opportunity, and they'll just seize it. And the black hole does come out correctly on a G, but he had Aegis. So even if they did focus their resources on to the Templar Assassin, it would have only done so much. In fact, Alliance was pushing a little bit right there, but in the end, they decide not to go too far with it. Despite black hole and everything being out, they want to get some bigger and better items. Abyssal Blade would be a nice pickup here for Ursa, but again, both Ursa and Slark, they constantly would beat on to Tia as he's going in with those, that refraction, but especially with the plus three charges, he was bulky enough to sustain pretty much taking no damage every single time that X marks the spot was used. So I I know I was talking about the idea of the Yules before that, and you had mentioned it. It's <laughs> They really could use that, man. Uh as we as we move on in this game, but life stealer bomb. Yeah, they're gonna catch Clockwork. He has a lot of support nearby, but they're gonna kind of be forced into a fight if anything. Loda going in with the Shadow Dance, playing too aggressive though. Now he's in a bad spot himself. Pops to BKB. He pounces out. Enigma still Holy waiting for a black EGM. hole. He's looking for it. He's gonna get one off right here. Puts him in a pulse down. He loses his teammate in the Sky Wrath. But Loda's putting in the auto attack. He's gonna be able to take a life stealer at least. But G with their refraction still pretty bulky. Where's Ursa during all this? He's meanwhile dealing with Batrider. He will get the kill. But his teammates are dying. Loda is going to get picked off as he gets dove on. And now Limp has to be careful himself. It's a three versus one right here. Although Enigma comes back in. The Limp will make his way back to the base here. But Slark, he's staying dead for another 90 seconds again. Yeah, and they still have the integral part of this combo, except the TA. Start dealing damage to this tier three. I mean, hell, it's not even really necessary right now. It's just the Ursa. But <laughs> lasts for eight seconds, basically finishes off the tower and... They're actually going to back off, maybe scared of Hanskin counter-initiation, but they still deal a fair amount of damage, and G just gets larger and larger. His score doesn't really reflect it. He's 6-1-7, and seven, but, like, it's that one, that one death that's the most important thing. G has been going, like, he's been through two black holes and a lot of attention on the Slark, but comes out on top every time. Well, you got TA making her way back to the top lane now. Yeah, again, she's been level 25 also for so long, and it's been on top of this game, the Satanic now to follow suit. But the Abyssal Blade on limp, it's, it's soon to come as well, and that's definitely going to be the key item. And Slark, meanwhile, still trying to finish his own basher into the Abyssal Blade, but obviously a little bit further behind because of these back-to-back uh, -back deaths here. In fact, Enigma has overtaken as the top farm on the team, and he is building a refresher, so... We'll have the ability to get a couple of black holes off now in these fights as 
finally it took a while to actually activate some initial black holes, but they've actually been pretty decent here, especially that last one. No black hole this time, though. 30-second cooldown. Ursa is going to be silenced out, putting the attacks on Elijah, doing plenty of damage oh no, with that. In rage, he got caught by the lasso after the fact, still mitigating a little bit, but that's going to wear off. And down goes Ursa, down goes Skyrath, the freezing kill to assist. Hanskin, he's on the run. Again, Loda going back in, pops a shadow dance, but he's by himself now in the midst of all five of them. Don't know what the game plan is here, but it's to die well. Oh, that's going to work out. <laughs> Sark, he's still running. Hook shot, trying to save the day. If anything, Afterlife still chasing, but Clockwork, of course, will end up falling, but nice Sark pounce block. needs to go. Yeah, the pounce block actually keeping him nearby. Another dark pack doesn't matter. Enigma with a black hole. He thought about it, but what's going to happen? He said, screw it. I got to make a play right here. Ursa did buy back, by the way. And Lifestealer made a fun through this. Here comes the lamp, but it couldn't get there fast enough. Oh, he already played to get closer. He gets a bash Brock off the bat, but the Hurricane Pike over the ledge will survive. Lifestealer goes back in here on the toggle, and Ursa's going to fall with a dieback. That could be the beginning of the end here for Vega Squadron. GG, well played. We're going to a third and final game here. Middle tower is under yeah, this time Vegas Squadron didn't give up. Radiance they didn't have as confident of a lead the entire game as they did in game one, but this time they were able to get initiation, and that was the issue in game one, that they were never really able to find it. And this game, I mean, hell, they didn't even need to use it. They could have just let that Siege Engine TA go ham. Eventually, Enigma did buy a Yules instead of that Refresher Orb, so it's possible that the strategy may have, you know, started losing power. Yeah. But still, they got a lot of damage done on that bot rax, took the fight when they needed to, put Alliance into a deep hole, and then started shoveling the dirt on top of them and take the game. So tie up the series. Not the most action-intensive game necessarily, but uh, a grind out by both sides. But obviously Vega Squatch and does break through. And yeah, G on TA, very impressive performance, 9-1 and 10. But even that doesn't seem like it reflects exactly what he did that game as you're talking about. So... We got the game three, though. Again, this isn't an elimination match necessarily, but the winner of this will be uh, moving out of the playoffs here and not have to worry about doing much else. And the loser are going to have to play Na'Vi, though, in what then would be an elimination match. Well, right now it's Alliance Vega Squadron. we got a third and final game of the day coming up, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.